Hello again everyone, and welcome back to another episode of whatever this thing is. Remember spies? More importantly, remember spy TV shows, and movies, and books, and toys? Remember like the invisible ink, and the watches with the little plastic antennas on them? Why is it that at a certain age, every kid is just obsessed with spies? Well today I wanted to talk about a movie that I think is one of the better ones to come out of this kid-oriented spy obsession, and that's 2001 Spy Kids. So this movie centres around two kids called Carmen and Junie, who live on a house on a cliff. Junie, don't forget to I am, I am. All right, all right. Okay, warts. Ah. Prepare to meet your maker. I completely forgot about the warts thing that they do with Junie. I get that it's supposed to be symbolic of Junie needing to get over his fears, but why warts? What's the point in tackling the cake? What did the cake do? So the initial setup of the movie is that Junie and Carmen's parents are spies, but the kids don't know. But when you start asking some serious questions, if your parents had this intricate course set up that you had to train on every morning before school. This movie also suffers from a little thing that I like to call beautiful home syndrome, which is a thing in a lot of 2000s movies where all of the family homes are really beautifully decorated and look like they must cost millions. So the dad is beginning to grow increasingly concerned at the disappearance of a bunch of spies that he used to work with, and he's trying to figure out why they went missing. Even now, these Fooglies are still really creepy. Who approved this? In a kid's movie. And the thumbs! I forgot about the thumbs. I feel like half of this movie is just a repressed memory. Nice dolls. Here, le let me see the dolls. Have a good day, son. Show him who's boss. Yeah, show him who's boss. That's right, son. You go in there and you beat up the other kids. That's my boy. I even have to share a room with him because he's so afraid of being alone. Watch out for Junie. Take care of Junie. Show Junie right from wrong. I shouldn't be responsible for anybody but me. You're so right, Carmen. Wow, you're so right, Carmen. You're the best, Carmen. Hey, Carmen, how about I come over to your parents' mansion after school? So then we get introduced to Fluke, who's having a meeting with all of the other evil businessmen, which I guess is something that they do. This is your big idea? Robot kids that look like my children. The president's daughter? An almost exact replica. Sometimes in order to think big, you have to think small. This is such a consistent trope of all kids spy fiction. So what if we used kids as spies? I wonder what we'd call those. Spy kids! So obviously at this point in the movie it's clear that the secret agents that went missing have been turned into Fluke's Fooglies, and now the parents are going off on a secret mission to try and find them. But then Fluke does some like Max Headroom broadcast intrusion. They got us. They got... There's a lot for you to know and very little time to explain. Uncle Felix! The first of which is... I'm not your uncle. Was that seriously all the disguise was? Has he been wearing that for their entire upbringing and they've just never questioned it until now? Then they find this secret room with this escape pod in it and I suddenly remember why spy movies are so cool. I genuinely want one of those rooms in my house. <laughs> How are they wearing life jackets all of a sudden? Judy? Judy? Judy, what are you doing down there? What does it look like you're doing? They look like they're in a pretty dire spot. I wonder how they're going to get out of this one. Oh yeah, of course, there's just a perfectly sized tunnel under the island. So this submarine's got everything. It's got a microwave and beds. Where do you think the toilet is on this thing? Now flushing your poop. You know, I'm glad that they answered that question. So next, they finally arrive at the safe house and they get to have a look around. Hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. Emergency cash? From every country. Really? Cash from every country? There's like 10 there, and it's three stacks deep, so there's like 30 tops. And this is 2001. 
And Germany and Italy are there, and they're going to adopt the Euro next year, so that's going to be useless soon anyway. Then there's a scene where the parents escape, but they get recaptured pretty quickly. And then Flute shows them how he's been turning the secret agents into the nightmare fuel of this movie. And then some secret agents show up at the safe house with Junie and Carmen and explain the same thing to them. You mean these mutants are captured secret agents? We're dealing with the genius. Told you Flute was a freak. Hmm, and you know that cute little tuneless song the characters sing? Play it backwards. We're trapped! Flute is a madman, help us, save us! Flute is a madman, help us, save us! A cry for help. Are you seriously trying to suggest that nobody's tried to play this show backwards before? People do it with the Beatles albums all the time. Why not this? Carmen and Junie then find this item called the Third Brain, which is this special thing that makes all the spy kids super intelligent. And then they have a fight over it in this cool action sequence and the kids get to escape on jetpacks. There's a lot of just cool, mindless action in this movie, and it is quite enjoyable. One of the staples of Spy Kids is tons of early 2000s CGI, and we get loads of it in this scene. I really like how rigid the flying looks. Is that the natural reaction to a kid you don't know clinging onto you? This woman just kind of pats Carmen on the head and accepts her fate. So what Kids Network approved this show? Was it Nickelodeon? I bet it was Nickelodeon. But in all seriousness, Floop's TV show is an absolute fever dream, and I'm surprised that the producers of this movie thought it was okay to show to kids. Why are you still wearing that? That could be a tracer. They could be tracking us. Don't start pointing fingers at me. I didn't do anything stupid, stupid. You better stop calling me names. Or what? Or I'm gonna call you names. I'll call you names. Yeah, that'll show her. So Carmen and Junie then have a run-in with these robot versions of themselves that have been sent after them. Junie! Look at you! Junie's dead. Like, he's nine. There's no way he's surviving being thrown around like that. Junie is dead. The robots get away with the brain, but then Carmen and Junie manage to retrieve one of their necklaces, which I think is like a tracker or something. There's this extra in the background who's just staring right at them. All the extras are supposed to be focusing on the roundabout, but then there's this one little girl who just doesn't care and wants to see what's going on with the camera. But you see, I now have the third brain. I don't need you anymore. I assure you, it's Mr. Minion now. So what is this supposed to prove exactly? He takes off the glasses and he's the same person. Just his eyes are a bit smaller? Children, lock him in the... virtual room. <gasps> That's a really underwhelming reaction. Take him away to the virtual room. Oh no, what am I going to do there? play Beat Saber. Meanwhile, the kids go and find this guy called Machete, who turns out to be their real uncle. But Machete refuses to go with them to Floop's castle, so they just decide to steal his plane and go anyway. But it's very clear that Machete just wants them to do that. I didn't do anything! Okay, airspeed, fine. No. The airspeed is not fine. It's all over the place. Look at it. Then some other stuff happens. There's nothing really funny to say about it. I watched this movie at one in the morning, so give me a break. <laughs> then they eject from the plane and they dive underwater to go into the castle. The spy kids are being mass produced now that Mr. Minion has the third brain. And then they actually run into some of the spy kids and shit really starts to go down. Can we make it? I think so. Well, this will be fine because she'll just land on the glass like earlier. Oh no! I hope this leads to a dungeon. So can Junie not read? What's that on your hands? Warts. Aren't they? Oh great. From sweaty hands sprout warts. Do you know why you have sweaty hands? From being scared all the time. Again, like this whole thing with warts is such an odd idea. They could have picked anything to show that Junie has anxiety. But no, it's gotta be warts, trust me. So 
So, is that the only female Thum Thum? Because I have a few questions. So Minion is the evil one? Yes. No. No, Floop's still evil. At least he's not innocent. He was still involved in turning these guys into nightmare fuel. So then the kids reunite with their parents. But there's a problem, because Antonio Banderas has been turned into the Fugly that Junie drew earlier in the movie. So really, it's all Junie's fault. He's the real monster here. What do you think you're doing? You're supposed to be in line with the others. You're supposed to be in line with the others. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, earlier in the movie it's established that Junie has this weird ability to mimic other people's voices. They never really explain why. I guess he just has the spy gene. Can I offer some sort of truce in exchange for your daughter? Spoken for. There you are. Didn't see you. What do you mean you didn't see her? Where did she come from? So they end up turning Mr. Minion into a Fugly. But then the parents get captured again by the robot versions of Carmen and Junie. The third brain is linked not only to them, but to all the robot children. Can't you remove it? We can't just take 500 brains out. So don't, just reprogram it. That would take weeks. Just two words. Binary switch, of course. So they would define right as wrong. And wrong is right. Come on. But it's not that simple. Figure it out. We'll be back for you. Yeah, just figure something out. Can't be that hard, can it? Reprogramming 500 killer robots. We're getting towards the finale now, so I'll just summarize a bunch of the action. Carmen and Junie defeat their robot counterparts, and then they regroup with their parents, and then Machete comes in at the last minute to help them fight all the other spy kids. But then Floop finally manages to reprogram them at the last minute, and they go after the bad guys instead and toss them up in the air. Why did you come back? For the same reason I left. I legitimately thought they were going to kiss here. And then that's really the end of the movie. They sort of sum up the movie with general messages about the importance of family and being pure of heart. The Thumb Thumbs are now apparently working as servants for the Cortez family, because I guess they just don't get a choice about where they work. And then right at the end, and this is real, George Clooney shows up, and that is Spy Kids. I like to make fun of this movie because it's really crazy and over the top, but as far as early 2000s kids movies go, this is actually really good. Also, I found out that Richard Linklater is in this, but just as like a minor role. And guess what his character's called? That's right, Cool Spy. Well, I hope you enjoyed my look at Spy Kids. Let me know what you want to see next, and I'll see you next time.